Hello everyone, is my microphone working? Okie dokie. Oh, okay. Welcome to the first Monday night Bible study of 2020. <laughs> we have entered a brand new year and a brand new decade with God. Isn't it good to remember that he is with us right now in all the days and moments of this new decade? So, Father, we, we look at Australia and we look at New Zealand and we understand a bit because we've had it in California. We've had it where I live in Florida. And, Father, we ask that we thank you for that rain that you did send and we ask for even more rain and that you would stop those fires. Lord, I feel for the people, feel for the animals. And so, Father, we don't know how you'll do it, but we know you can do it. So we ask you to do it, to put a stop to those fires. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, violinist, welcome. Our format is welcome song, prayer, sharing, and closing. Comments and or questions are always welcome. The song tonight is What a Beautiful Name It Is. Good one for the beginning of the year. The uh, liturgical churches just finished the Christmas season today. And today is the Feast of Epiphany. Okay, here's the link, and I will turn off my mic, and if you will type done when you're finished. You were the word at the beginning, one with God. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you.
Oh, how's precious, Santa? Let's spray. Father God, we bless you in this day. Thank you for your love, your care, your correction, and your compassion. Thank you for this time we have chosen to spend gathered around your word. Please be with each one of us in the area of our greatest need. And Lord, may the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, thank you for a healthy birth for Hannah's great grandchild. So, um, first we're just going to chat about something. I want to share a little more about one word because it's the beginning of the year. It's a great time to ask the Lord for a Rima word for yourself. And I'm going to explain, I told you I would, and I'm going to explain more about that. Um, we talked about it briefly before. I and many of my friends have done this for several years, maybe five, six, I don't know. And we either write it down in a brand new journal or on an online version. I personally use notes because it's on both my computer and my phone. And so then as the year goes on, everything in my journal centers around the word, whatever it is. And then of course, sometimes I forget it for a while and go back to it. So this is what one author shared. Yeah, Dodie notes <laughs> to herself. <laughs> Funny. This is what one author shared. The title is, What's Your One Word? And the author says, Maybe you're in a season of abundance. Hannah is right now with that new grandchild, great-grandchild. You have favor and delight and more opportunities than you know what to do with. And Dodie note, that's a fun place to be. Anybody there right now in the time of abundance? Or, <laughs> cool violins. Maybe you're in a season of grace and you're learning your limitations and you're discovering weaknesses and awakening to God's provision in the midst of that. And Dodie note, that is an enlightening place to be, sometimes difficult, but a place of closeness with our Father. Anybody there? And maybe, maybe you're in a season of adversity. Your marriage, your finances, your health, your job, or some other relationships are crumbling. Dodie note, that's another difficult season, but it's also one where we learn to trust, lean, and rely on God in a special way. No matter what season, that sort of some other sort that you find yourself in, your Heavenly Father wants to speak to you. Yes, that's where you were when you broke your leg, but now you're healing. Did God meet you in a special way when you broke your leg? Or your ankle? So violinist said, yes, God very much was with him in a special way when he broke his leg and um, gone when she sprained her ankle. I've been in a grace and able to um, help other people since I became a widow. A friend of mine's husband died on December 10th and the service is Saturday. And I was able to help her with understanding and compassion and practical stuff that I would have never known had I not become a widow when I did. So God does use everything for his good. The beginning of a new year provides an opportunity for reflection and vision casting. This, the beginning of the year, is a season to both look back 
and press forward in our relationship with God. And I wanted to comment there about, they said it's an opportunity for reflection and vision casting. That sounds a little funny. But one scripture from years ago that I love is found in Proverbs 29, 18. And I pulled the Amplified because it says, where there is no vision, which means no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Another version says, without a vision, the people perish. Another version says something like, for lack of knowledge, the people perish. Yes, Dawn said she likes to do that, reflect, and then able to look for a vision. Another verse that's really good is in... Um, Proverbs 16, 9, and it says, the mind of a man plans his way, <laughs> but the Lord directs his steps. And again, in Psalm 37, 23, we read, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord, and he, that's a capital H, so it's the Lord, and the Lord delights in his way when we follow him. So it seems to me that planning is something good and beneficial for us to do. We plan, but we seek God and follow his way. Seeking God for a word for the year to meditate on, to look up in scripture, and to point us to the hand of God in our lives has been very good for me. And the author continues. Cool, violinist. Over the past few years, I've asked God to give me one word for the upcoming year. Or it could be a phrase. And the author says, one word that I can study. One word that perks my ears up every time it appears. Every time you're reading in scripture or somebody's talking to you and that word appears, you go, whoop, you know. One word, the author says, that helps me discover the depth of God's heart. And one word that leads me closer to Christ. And uh, dirty note, salvation, okay. Dirty note, anyone here not want a way to draw closer to Jesus and discover his heart for you? <laughs> I don't think so. Previous words, this author says, Yes, I do. I think we all do. Previous words that this author had included things like listen, joy, and beloved. When I first started chatting in 2007 or something, eight, around there, that's when I became Dodie because I wanted to really understand beloved. I didn't do word of the year at that time, but Dodie was my nick because I did not realize that I was loved. Mine had been recently, be intentional, choose, and I am is Emmanuel, among others. And as we look up scripture, once you get a word, you look it up, relevant to our word, we will be drawn to other similar verses with perhaps a different slant. Later, I will share how that worked for me so far this year, or I might not because I don't think I typed it. This year, the author says, and I agree, this year me and the author are inviting each one of you to ask God for your one word, the word God wants to use to make you more radiant like Jesus. The author even gives and suggests a guide, and I will share a link with you and then post it at the end. 
so this this author says in the guide this year i'm inviting you to ask god for your one word the word he wants to use to transform you and make you radiant like jesus May this one word guide awaken you to the work that God will be doing in and through you during the upcoming year. And then there are steps. Step one. Before you begin reflecting on the list of words below, spend some time in prayer asking God what one word he wants to awaken you to during the upcoming year. Then... And the guide has a list of words. Then spend a few moments reflecting over the list of words. Circle any that you feel compelled to discover more of in your life. Or just write them down, whatever comes into your heart or mind, as we look at the list. Remember, I'm going to share the link for you so you don't have to, like, worry about it right now. But here's the list. Okay. I'm just going to read them. Jesus, Father, Spirit, Love, Joy, that's a good one, isn't it? Hope, Grace, Peace, Kindness, Gentleness, Self-Control, Patience, New, Goodness, Generosity, Gospel, Remember, Blessing, Kingdom, Church, time, holy, service, healing, life, today, prayer, disciple, follow, lead, forgive, freedom, <coughs> humility, faith, trust, wholeness, restoration. That was one of mine one year. Hello, Kevin. Redemption, renewal, rebuilding, shalom, faithful, presence, sacrifice, change. Unity, stillness, silence, gratitude, purpose, now, ask, abundance, family, alive, purity, wisdom, deeper, go, yes. Aren't those interesting? Kevin, we're talking about, right now we're having a pre-talk, and we're talking about choosing a word for the year, and I just read a list of possible choices that an author shared, and um, so you can just join in. You'll figure it out as we go along, and it will be posted. So step one was to pick out a word, okay? And maybe from that list or just a word that the Lord brings to your heart. I don't actually use a list, but if you were drawn to more than one word, then write them down and take time to pray and ask God which one he wants to echo in your life in the coming year. Which word would lead you to more than information? You don't want to go just get gather information in your mind. We want to be transformed. So the scripture says, be ye therefore transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you want a word that's going to renew your mind, but more than transform your heart and transform your life. Step three. If you pick a word, write it somewhere in large print, all caps, she says. Consider posting it near your desk, on your bathroom mirror, or in a central place in your home, or maybe in your car, or on your tractor, wherever you are a lot. And step four, and this is a cool one, write out a prayer asking God to draw you deeper to him and his word 
using this one word in 2020. Ask for your ears, your mind, your eyes, and your heart to be open to all the ways he's going to speak to you this year. And after you've done it, if you do it, welcome back. Now that you've selected your one word for 2020, here are some ways to incorporate that one word into daily life. Every single day in your quiet time, invite God to speak to you about your one word. Consider sharing your word with others and inviting them to identify their one word, isn't it? And I'm doing that right now. <laughs> Pray for each other to grow in this area of their lives, especially if you have a group in town, you might want to share it with them. And um, post your one word in places you see often. Sometimes people buy a piece of jewelry, like say hope was your word. You might get a bracelet with hope on it or spell it out with those little letters, those beads, you know, or a sticky note on your desk or your cell phone background or your computer background. Use each time you see it as a reminder to pray for transformation in your heart and life. And then you can also... Do a Bible search, which is quite fun. Use an online tool like Bible Gateway or Bible Hub to research your one word. Discover how scripture uses your word and what the Bible reveals about it. You will be amazed. Last year, my brother, my little brother was dying. Last year, my little brother was dying. And um, we kind of knew it, you know. And my other brother... I'm giving you a link, Crosswalk, so you can just click on the link and it'll open the whole lesson with the list, okay? So um, my older, my other brother, I have two little brothers. One's three years younger and one's 13 years younger. And the 13 year, the 11 year younger one is the one who died. But the older brother decided, and he was afraid and his wife was scared to death because this cancer was in his brain and all that. Well. The other brother decided to look up fear, fear, F-E-A-R. And do you know that fear was in the Bible almost 365 times? So my the brother would send an email every day to the other brother and the rest of us with the scripture about fear not. Isn't that cool? So you never know when you pick a word what's going to happen. So you share what you're learning with others. Yeah. And you consider, you can consider making a one word journal or diary just for that and keep track of where and when you encounter your one word through interaction, through conversations or in reading. And Dodie note and crosswalk, here's your link. I hope this inspired you as it did me some years ago. And I will also put this link into the forum. Here's the link. Okay, any comments on that? Questions? You're welcome. I hope it works. If it doesn't, send me a message. But I'm putting the whole thing in the forum so you can get it out of there too. Okay, no questions? So what we're going to do, for real, that was not a Bible study. <laughs> we're going to begin a short series on Put Off, Put On. Several years ago, on Wednesday morning, we discussed this, and I want to return to it both personally and here on Monday nights. We never did it on a Monday night, I don't believe. The, and, and if we did, it's good to review. 
This is a principle put off, put on, that shows us how to tear down strongholds and eliminate stinking thinking. We replace lies and false thinking with the truth. And where do we find truth? One place. Yep, the Bible. We did this study. Um, yes, in the word in the Bible. We did this in a care group many years ago. Chip Ingram is a teacher, Bible teacher, and he teaches it in his Miracle of Life Change series, which I think you can find on YouTube. It used to be on YouTube. And put off, put on. <laughs> was very transformational for me when our group did it. And I am going to read the scriptures out loud and post it that it's based on. Now, I want you to remember. When we read this scripture, that even though it is a sobering passage, it is also part of life lived in Christ. It is connected to breaking free from strongholds or think, stinking thinking also. And who wants to remain tied to stinking thinking or false belief or wrong actions? I don't, and you don't either. Ready? Now remember, don't be discouraged as we read. This is from Ephesians 4. In Ephesians 4, we are admonished, beginning in verse 17. So, I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Oh, hi, that would be wonderful. He's a great teacher. I said he could post some of Chip Ingram's teachings. Okay, so let's go back, and I want to read the passage, okay, in continuity. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, verse 20 and 21, that, however, is not the way of life you learn learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. And here it is. Verse 22. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Verse 28. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Verse 29, 
Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit those who listen. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Malice is evil intent towards another. Verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And I'm like reading that, I'm like, wow, right? Quite a list. And tonight we are just introducing this topic or principle. I want to share another article that I found online and it's really good. And so for background, we are going to use this. This is the put off, put on dynamic. And this is very enlightening. Christians often fail to change because they try to change solely by breaking bad habits. Dodi note, I bet we can all think of times when we tried that and how well it failed. You do not break a spiritual stronghold or a spiritual wrong thinking by just willing it. You can't. It doesn't work. We need to have a focus forward. Dawn said, yes. The author says, change that last will not take place until you replace the bad habit with a godly habit. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, we just read that, explains this as the principle of replacement. This process of change is described in various places in the Bible by the terms put off, renew, and put on. Christians are to put off the old sinful way of life, renew their minds with biblical truth, and then put on the new godly way of life. Dodi note. Do you see how this ties in with stronghold replacement? Now remember, a stronghold is a practice way of thinking or acting. It's a habit. It's an habitual way or a practice way of thinking and acting. Strongholds can be good if they are godly ones, but they can be pure awful if they are selfish man-designed ones. Another word is habits. Habits can be good or not good for us. A lot of people think all strongholds are bad, but scripture tells us that God is our stronghold. So how can that be bad? Second Samuel says, Second Samuel 2, 22 verse 3 says, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. And verse 9, I mean Psalm 9 verse 9 says, the Lord will also be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold stronghold in times of trouble. So maybe it would be fun after we finish this put on put off series if we ponder strongholds. But let's go back to the author now. 
the author says, the process of change is not complete by simply telling God or other people our regret or asking forgiveness. It is not enough for a habitual thief to tell God he's sorry every time he steals. Oh God, I'm sorry I stole again. For true change to play, take place, the thief must now become an habitual laborer and a gift giver. Ephesians 4.25 It is not enough to put off the old man. You must also put on the new man for true and lasting change to take place. God God intends for Christians to pursue putting on of the biblical alternatives to whatever they are trying to put off. Concentrating on what needs to be put on is necessary in overcoming sinful tendencies. That's Philippians 3, 12 through 14 and Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 12... I mean, Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And in another version, or go, continuing, it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, that means letting it go, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And that's Paul. And my favorite verse Philippians 4 8 was mentioned. So, of course, I pulled it for you again. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And a dirty note. We can only think one thought at a time, and we eventually become like whatever we spend our time thinking about it. That is why I love Philippians 4, 8, and also why I grew and learned so much when I pondered, put off, put on for the first time. These sinful tendencies, habits, are patterns of learned ways of living. Those are bad strongholds. Therefore, they must be unlearned and replaced with new biblical habits, patterns, and tendencies. And the scriptures are listed there. This change is a gradual process that takes place as one, as we put into practice the new biblical principles for living. In time, the old sinful ways will just disappear. Well, how can anybody prevent you from having a forward focus? Somebody said, they dislike it. They do not like it when people tell you to change your old but not let you have a focus forward. I don't see how anybody can control your focus. It's inside your head. So before we go for tonight, and we're almost done, we will simply read the referenced verses that are listed up there. I didn't list them again. I'll list them now. The first one was Hebrews 5, 14, and it says, 
but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Okay, the next verse is 1 Timothy 4, 7. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. This is talking about our responsibility. Philippians 4, 11. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covet covetous people, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such some of you were some of you. But you were washed, and you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And that is a New Testament scripture, not old. Romans 6, 16 and 17 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves to slaves to obey, you are at that one's slave to whom you obey? whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that although you were, we were slaves to sin, yet we have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And let's pray. Father God, I am excited about revisiting this principle and exploring what wonderful gifts you will reveal to us, in us, and through us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are our stronghold. And in any and every circumstance of life, we can run to you and be safe. Bless each one of us and those we love. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, but that's, an, I said man, men think that homosexuality is old, Old Testament, but it's not, is it? Because that was the New Testament. I was doing a study. I was doing um, research. I couldn't believe this. I was doing a bunch of research for some put off and put on principles. The opposite of this is that. The opposite of this wrong thing is this good thing. I found out. There's scripture that's not even in most of the translations. And then I researched why. So that's something we might talk about next week. But it was amazing. I was like, really? And it's right in the middle of a passage. Anyhow, I'm going to shut off my mic. Well, people read selectively. Whole denominations do that. But God, it says God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's what the scripture says. He does not change. And his principles do not change with the culture. Sodom and Gomorrah was a long time ago. And we're living in that right now, kind of. Anyhow, you can chop off the recording before that talk.